<laughs> I want to thank uh, the, the, the board of Reformation, the elders, uh, all of the ministry groups that were represented uh, that welcomed both me and Tanya uh, this weekend. Your hospitality says a lot about you. Uh, you serve with excellence, and we have felt very welcomed. And Pastor Kay, we honor you. Thank you for allowing us to be here today, and thank you for your leadership here over the years at Reformation. Appreciate you. I understand there was a need to introduce me so that we would know who I am, but man, I liked where y'all were before that. I did. I, I liked when I, I sensed that you were yearning for the presence of God in this place. Really, really. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Let me ask you something this morning. Is that really the desire of your heart? We've got a little time together this morning, and, and I just want to be with him. I don't know why else we would have come out. I, I mean, we like each other, but we can see each other anywhere. I believe we came here this morning because what? We just want to be with the King of glory. We want to be in his presence. When I was 18 years old, I gave my life to Christ. It was a, a dramatic um, surrender. I had grown up in a Christian home, but I had gotten deeply into the party lifestyle, and that became who I was. I didn't have an identity outside of partying. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Don't judge me. A long time. It almost led me to the end of my life. I found myself one, one evening in a ditch, um, clawing the ground through the blinding rain that happened to be falling that night and saying, God, please don't let me die here in this ditch. God preserved my life, but he required something of me. And I found out what it was. He, he called me to give my life, to be willing to go anywhere and do anything. Complete surrender. That if he was going to give me more life, I needed to use that life to pursue him. I just want to be with you. I can remember very dramatically being the wild teenager that finally found himself in a Bible college dorm with a lot of rules that I was unfamiliar with. And I thought, where have I, where have I gone? What am I doing? But God knew what he was doing. In that first year, I can remember being desperate for God. I didn't go to Bible college to become anything. I, I went there because my pastor told me I could find God and get to know him better if I went there. So I signed up for one year. <laughs> that was the first step, I guess. But man, that first year, I felt overwhelmed out of my league I didn't know if I was going to make it, but I'll tell you what was true is I was so passionately pursuing God. I was reading his word till late hours of the night. I, I had a roommate that we happened to click spiritually, and, and we would spend time into the, into the early hours of the morning weeping, weeping in his presence, and I remember feeling it. 
I remember that I, I knew that he was there and I just wanted to continue to press into his presence. The things that I was learning about him was truly leaving me speechless. I felt like this video, if you guys could play it. You find me. When I'm hiding behind all my disguises, you see me. It takes you to keep me breathing. You are heart, passion, vision. You send me and bring me close, 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 so close until when you look at me, you see you. You are heavenly, my present and future destiny. You are father, creator, sustainer, life changer, pride breaker. You are the same yesterday, now, and forever. You are pleasure, worth, reason, present in every season. You are worship, devotion. You are the reason for all my commotion. You are the one that I pray to. You can tell that I'm nothing without you. So awesome that I can even pray to you, about you, to know you, to sense you, to believe you more, to love you more, to obey you more, to give you more of my heart. Oh God, search me, know me, see me, examine me, test me, watch me, investigate me, question me, be pleased with me, have me, change me, sustain me, decrease me. Decrease me, decrease me, until there is no me left, only you, only you, only you are light, are true, are you, our hope, our joy, our strength, our escape, rescue, safe, you are peace, you are belief, you are advance and retreat of what, to what, to whom can I compare you, you are my all things new, you are my place of refuge, my fortress, my rest, my creativity in the strength of your words to me, you are my ability to see, hear, feel, move, live, breathe, be, you are life and death all at the same time. You are friend, believer, savior, redeemer. You are the truth. You transcend old age and youth. You are timeless, priceless, lightness in darkness, greatness, goodness, sinless. And in a mess like my life, you see righteousness. Mm. In fact, you leave me speechless. You alone. Our God. I'm sure you've been there. Maybe you're there now. Maybe you're in a season of your life where you just really are enjoying the presence of God. Maybe, maybe not just on Sunday, but throughout your week, maybe daily, you're in a season where you just feel like you're close to him and he overwhelms you and you love being in his presence. And I'm sure all of us here today do love being in his presence. But my question this morning is, how's your love life? Again, I look back to that point and, and, and I can remember how I felt and, and I have to acknowledge and be honest that my life like yours has been like this. And there have been seasons in my life where I felt like that, that I was close to God, that I knew I was right in the center of his will. And then there have been seasons where I don't know where he is. There have been times when I, I don't know what to do or where to go. And, and as much as I try to find him, I don't feel his presence in my life. I know he's there because I know his word. But I don't sense him. Sometimes my, my, my spiritual life has grown dry. And oftentimes through my life, I've had to walk through seasons of wilderness. 
Times when I, I, I didn't know where I was going. I, I didn't know where God was. I, I thought maybe God had given up on me. And during those times, I, I didn't even feel like at times crying out. I'm sure you've been through your own wildernesses in life. Maybe some of you are going through that wilderness right now. It can be a financial wilderness. Something has got you just stressed out because you don't know how you're going to make your payments. Maybe you're in a jobless wilderness. Hmm. Looking around to find out what is it that God is going to open up for you to do, but you are not sure what's coming next. Maybe you've been in a sickness wilderness. Maybe someone you love has been. Maybe a family wilderness. You've got some children or some people in your family and you're struggling with that relationship. Maybe it's a marriage wilderness and you and your spouse just can't seem to get on the same page and you're wondering, where is God in this? Maybe you've been in a wilderness of loss. pain. Over the last decade, I've lost both mom and dad. Loss. You as a community have experienced together a wilderness of loss. Isn't it an awful time seemingly? Where you're trying to figure out why would God lead me here? Right when we felt like we had momentum and we got vision, then this. What is, what is it that God is up to here? God, where are you? God, why would you? Maybe a wilderness of complacency. You good. <laughs> Maybe you're in a waiting wilderness. I don't like those. I want it to be, I want to see the way forward. Some God, times God says, you need to get in the wilderness of waiting. Maybe you're in the wilderness of loneliness. Let down. Maybe you've lived with the Lord for a really long time, but if you're being honest, you say, I don't feel like I once felt. I, I, I don't sense his presence the way I wish that I would. What do you do when you're in the wilderness? What do you do when you're in the wilderness? Well, I have found that wildernesses often are used by God in order to drive us to a place where we are introduced to him in a new way. I don't believe that God causes our wildernesses. I believe that God just meets us there. Now, sometimes he does cause them. But whether it's caused by our own actions, whether it's caused by life, whether it's caused by him, God meets his people in the wilderness. You know the stories. God is in the wilderness too. Listen, listen, you just have to find him. He's there too, but, but sometimes the, the thirst and the drought of the wilderness will cause you to be thirsty to the place where you say, God, I've got to find you right now. Have you ever been there? That your wilderness situation has caused you to be desperate for him, and so you cry out, oh, God. This happened to David. Again, we see it through scripture. You remember the life of David. I won't give you all the details. We don't have time. But I, he started out in the fields, right? Probably wilderness area. And he was a shepherd, right? Yeah. And, and during that time, you can imagine he's nobody, is he? He, he's, he's just a young boy that's overlooked and he's, he's in the field. But even then he was a young boy after God's own heart. And some Psalms were written as he looked back to those days when it was just him and God. See, that happens too, right? Life comes in, it gets 
distracting, and suddenly we're dealing with so much in life that we forget to pursue him. I think that happened in David's life a couple of times. He had all this victory as a king. You remember it. He overtook Goliath. I mean, he's being cheered as they come through. Finally, it says Saul has killed his thousands. David has killed his. He's rising up. Before long, you know, the story becomes king and there's battle victory after battle victory. And then there's a drift. Like we all drift. And that leads to some sin in his life, but because he's still chasing God, he comes back to God, doesn't he? God brings him back because he, he wants this relationship. And then all these things happen as a result of that sin. His son dies. There's chaos in his house. Amon, his own son, rapes his half-sister. Tamar, wilderness. And then after faithfully serving God as what he would become as the greatest king of Israel all time, his own son Absalom did what? Betrayed him. Betrayed him. I mean, he did it for four years. He went and made friends and kissed people on the face in order to undermine his father's authority. And then he went and he got together all the people against his own father. And David runs. He, he gets probably about a thousand men with him and, and, and they run. And you know where they run? Right here to Psalm 63. It, the, the text tells us in 2 Samuel 15, 16, read it later, that when he gets out into the wilderness, he, he sees a hill and he climbs up that hill, that small mountain, and as he's climbing up that mountain, the, the Bible says he's weeping. Have you been there? Do you know what that hill was, by the way? The Mount of Olives. And he gets up to the top of that hill, the Mount of Olives, in a wilderness where there is no water. And yet, as he gets to the top of the Mount of Olives, it's not his physical quench that concerns him. There's something going on as he gets to the top, crying all the way, that he wants more than water. Because as dry as his physical condition is in that wilderness, his soul and his spirit feels even drier. He comes thirsty and he cries out. He says, oh God, you are my God. Oh God. Again, think back to some of your wilderness moments. Have you ever been where David is this morning emotionally? We just don't know what to do. All of the resources that you had don't seem to be enough. None of the advice that you're getting seems to be able to do anything about your wilderness experience. And finally, we cry out and we say, oh, God. Listen to me. Listen to me. As we go through this today, I, I want you to follow David. Can you do that with me? This is going to be a little interactive. Hang on. Hang on. Oh God, oh Elohim. Elohim is creator God. Uh, uh, creator God is all powerful God. So when he addresses and he calls out and he cries out, he's calling out oh powerful sovereign creator. The one who created the universe with just the sound of his voice, who sustains it by the spirit of power. Uh, that God, oh God, oh God. God, I know I'm weak, but I know you're powerful. I, I know you're strong. I, I, I know I'm confused, but I, I know you're wise. He's calling out to the all-wise, all-powerful creator of the universe. But it's not just oh God, is it? Oh God, you are. 
Oh, he's a creator God, but he's a covenant God. He's a powerful God, but he's a personal God. He's an intimate God. He's not just leaning into the creator. He's creating, he's leaning into his lover, his savior, his help. The, 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 the covenant keeping God, the God that never breaks a promise. Oh God, you are my God. Here it goes. You ready? Are you there? Amen. Is there anybody right now that says, I need to press into the presence of my God? Amen. Right here, not, not later. Amen. Oh God, you are my God. Notice what he says. I long for you. <laughs> I long for you. You know that word shahar in Hebrew? It means to strongly desire something. So much so that you seek for it diligently. <laughs> it's to desire God so much that you're desperate to find him. Notice he says, I earnestly seek you. I long for you. God, I got to find you right now. What does that imply? That in the wilderness, sometimes you don't sense his presence. But David's chasing him down. He climbs up to the mountain olives and he goes, oh God, you're my God. I got to find you right now. I, I'm desperate for you right now. How many of you know that that place and that position is a good one? The only thing worse than longing for God is not wanting too long for God. And so we're going to invite you this morning to follow David. I long for you. My soul thirsts for you. By the way, this word long, literally the word means to break in. <laughs> what is David trying to do? When he says, I long for you, the word means I'm breaking in. <laughs> There's desperation with a break in. <laughs> you, you need something bad. He says, God, I need to break into your presence right now. I'm coming in. <laughs> I'm coming in. I'm pressing. I'm pressing into your presence. Oh God, you're my God. I, I'm breaking into your presence. I'm desperate for you. My soul, my nefesh in Hebrew, my, my innermost being, the thing that controls my mind, my emotion and my will, that who I am at the deepest recesses of my being is thirsty. It's thirsty. It's thirsty. Listen to me. Thirst is an insatiable longing that cannot be ignored. <laughs> it must be heard. Let me ask you right now, where are you? Where are you getting thirsty? Are you getting, is your soul, are you longing for him? See, listen to me. God likes it when we long for him. I long for my wife sometimes. <laughs> That's what happens in love relationships. <laughs> she likes to be longed. <laughs> That's what love's all about. That's what intimacy's all about. I need to be in your presence. I can't stand to be away from you. Where are you going? I'm going too. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. God said, do you love me like that? 
Do you love me like that? Are you longing for me from your innermost? Is it coming in from the inside? And I can read that. I know when it's happening. Maybe it's starting to rise up in you right now. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns. Y'all better catch it. I mean, this is some, this is some love language. The word come on in Hebrew means to long for greatly, to desire greatly. It's related to an Aramaic word, interestingly, that means this, to become pale and weak-eyed. <laughs> his innermost being is so thirsty that his outward person is turning pale. <laughs> Woo. It's starting to hurt. It's starting to hurt. I want you so bad, God. I, God, you are my God. I'm in this dry place right now. I'm in this wilderness right now. But I tell you what I need. What would you have said? I need Absalom to stop doing what he's doing. I need him to go ahead back home and behave himself. I, I need to go back to my kingdom and get things the way they should be. God, I'm going to need you to rescue me. I, I would be giving out all the stuff I need, but -uh, not the man after God's own heart. <laughs> There's not a request in this psalm, so don't look for it. He gets caught up. He gets caught up in the presence of God. And something starts to change. He's, he's desiring God so greatly that his knees are weak. He's hiding in the wilderness seeking salvation from his son. But that's not what's bothering him right now. He wants more of God. A.W. Tozer says this, and I like it. Oh, God, I have tasted your goodness. And it has both satisfied me and made me thirsty for more. I am painfully conscious of my need for further grace. I'm ashamed of my lack of desire. Oh, God, there it is. The triune God, I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing. I thirst to be made more thirsty still. Is this your prayer this morning? Where are you at? Don't grow distant. Don't, don't, I want you right now to, to, to pause with me. Remember, this is participation. I feel like that maybe this morning the Holy Spirit is creating some longing. I feel like he's creating some yearning. I feel like he's creating some thirst. I feel like that he's creating a need for us to press into his presence. So we're going to do something that might be a little off. The guys back there have a, a sound, and it's the sound of what the Bible calls a shofar. Yeah, you seem to know what it is. The shofar, do you know why it came to be? It was used for a lot of things in Israel, but why it came to be is when they went to Sinai to, to, to meet with God and God's presence came down and it was scary as all get out. They heard his voice and it sounded like this shofar. Would you play it for us, guys? The voice of God representing the presence of God. But I want you to do, if you can, and again, it's different. I want you to shut your eyes for me. This is time for you to say it's not about who's on stage. I don't want you to press into my presence at all. But this morning, right now, we have an opportunity right now to say, God, I need to break in. I need to press in deeper. I've drifted. I'm farther away. God, would you allow us to press into your presence just a little more? Just like Moses pled out, God, would you, would you let us see your glory? 
Well, you all, you can open your eyes, cry out with David, oh God, you are my God. Let's do it. I long for you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you. Good, good. You ready to press in some more? You sure? All right. Yes, he says, in the sanctuary, I've seen you. What is David doing? He's crying out, oh, God, my God, I'm yearning. I'm pressing in. I got to find you. I don't think he can find him yet. So you know what he does? He, he, he thinks back. By the way, when he fled from Absalom, they took the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God. And they worship, then they sacrifice. Then David says, send the ark back and God will return me to him. So he's thinking about, well, here it is. He misses the presence of God right now. So he's thinking back. You think back. Do do, Do you remember a time in your life when you can remember feeling him? Do you? Take your time. That's a good discipline when you're in the wilderness. Look back. I know who you are. I remember that time I witnessed your power. Anybody been a witness to his power? I I remember how strong you are. I know how you got me out of messes before. I remember even the time that I was back and we were in your presence and we were worshiping you. Remember, David is a worshiper. He's a psalmist. He's a musician. He says, I can remember that time. I can just imagine him thinking back to that moment when maybe he was playing the strings and he was singing out this God song from his heart. And he says, I remember in the midst of your worship, In the sanctuary where the people of God were gathered together, I remember when I sensed your power show up. Listen, I I saw your splendor. That word splendor is just the word glory. It's the Hebrew word kavod. It means weight or pressure or importance. What, what, What God's glory is, is when he starts to fall down on his people. When the weight of the presence of God starts to get heavy. <laughs> he says, I remember that time when I was worshiping and, I, and, I, and your power was displayed in the place and your presence fell thick. It was heavy. And by the way, when God's presence falls, what does he reveal? He reveals himself. Here I am. Are you pressing in? He says, because experiencing your loyal love, I want you to to go through what David's going through. He still hadn't found it yet, but he's crying out. He's thirsty. He's yearning. He's longing. He's breaking in. He's pressing in. He's thinking back. And then he says, when I think back, I remember your loyal love. Loyal love is the Hebrew word chesed, and it means covenant faithfulness. It means loyal love, too, but showing loyal love through your faithfulness. Let me ask you, is he a faithful promise keeper in your life? He promised you victory. Has he... Has he provided victory in your life? He he promised peace. Has he provided peace in your life? He promised to love you like a brother. Has he been faithful to deliver? He promised joy, strength, guidance, health, instruction, wisdom. His Holy Spirit is a comforter. Heaven itself, eternal rewards, all-time loyalty will never leave you, never forsake you. Over 30,000 promises. And he says, I'm going to keep them, every one. This is like a relationship you've never been in before. 
I never break my word. I never betray. I never turn my back. I never let you sink. I never allow you to go all the way on. My presence is always with you. He says, I remember your loyal love. And then what does he say? My lips will praise you. When you're in the wilderness, cry out to God, press into his presence and praise him. Praise him. Now, listen, I know I got to, I know. Look, there's some praise words here. You're going to, you're going to have to see, because here's what praise looks like. And let's see what you want to do with it. My lips will praise you. The word for praise here is the Hebrew word Shabbat. And it means literally to glorify. But, but listen, as you break it down, it means to, to cheer with a loud voice. It means to boast. It means to brag. It means to make exuberant statements about someone. It means to advertise his greatness. David is there and he's still in the wilderness. Absalom's still ruling in Jerusalem. People are coming out after him and he's caught up in the presence of God. He's, he's pressing in and as he presses in and he remembers his power and he remembers his splendor and he remembers his faithfulness and he remembers his covenant faithfulness and as he remembers his love, he says, my lips will boast about you. My, listen, it's a decision. You can make it or not. He says, I'm going to make a decision even if God isn't here yet. Even if I'm still thirsty, even if I'm still longing, even if I'm still, I'm pressing in and I'm going to make a decision right now. I'm going to boast about his goodness. I'm going to boast about my creator. I'm going to boast about my God. I'm going to boast about the one that I yearn for and who always satisfies me and is faithful to me. He just starts boasting and bragging about his God. He's my all powerful savior. He's not just God. He's my God. He's a promise keeper. He just starts boasting about God. I wonder, I wonder right now, I know it's easier when I'm getting loud, but is there anybody in here right now that just need to say something personal, personal about your God? What has he done for you? What has he done for you? What has he done for you? Anybody want to boast about it? Anybody want to say brag on God right now? Anybody want to brag on God? Anybody want to put it on a billboard and say this is who my God is? Anybody want to boast about his goodness? Anybody want to brag about his faithfulness? What is it you want to tell him today about how good he is? What is it you need to say about him? That's it, church. That's it, church. A decision. A decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We getting there. We getting there. Come on. We getting there. Here's what he says. For this reason, I will praise you while I live. Listen, listen, listen. For this reason, I will praise you. Let me take you to the next step. You're good. I'm sorry to interrupt. I am. I am. I mean, I'm sorry. He says this. I'll praise you where I, while I live. You know what that word praise means? It's a different one. First one meant boast. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This word, Barak. You heard that name. Barak comes from the Hebrew root, Barak, and it means knee. My lips will praise you. And since your loyal love is so good, listen to what he says. You drive me to my knees driving me to my knees. Baraka. It means to honor. It means to adore. Look, when you, when you fall at his feet and you say, God, I've been boasting about you and in my boasting, I'm falling even more in love with you. I, I adore you. I, I worship you. God, you drive me. I don't know. Is there somebody wants to join me? Does somebody need to get on their knees right now before God and say, God, we worship you. We worship you, God. We, we lay our burdens down at your feet. Lord, we kiss your feet. We adore you. We worship you this morning. 
We adore you. God, there's no one like you. You're forever faithful. There's nobody like you, oh God. David's losing himself. He's losing himself. For this reason, I'm bowing down, he says. Listen, 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 listen. Come on. Come on. We're almost done. Come on. Come on. For this reason, I will praise you while I live. Listen, listen. In your name. In your name. In your name. You can bow. You can raise your hands. You can boast in your name. Let me ask you, what's his name? (laughs) What's his name? I am. What do you need right now in your wilderness? What's his name? I am. (laughs) What do you need more than anything this morning? I am. You need power? I am Elohim, the all-powerful. I'm El Elyon. I'm El Shaddai, almighty God. You need instruction. I am Adonai, the Lord and Master. Feel abandoned and alone. I'm El Roi. I'm the God who sees. Do you need a companion this morning? He's Hashem Shema. The Lord is there. Feel insignificant this morning. He's El Shaddai, the All Sufficient. Need provision. He's Hashem Jirah, my provider. Need physical, emotional, spiritual healing. He's Hashem Rafa, the Lord who heals. Lost your way. He says, I am Hashem Rohi, the shepherd. Is your life in turmoil? I'm Hashem Shalom, Prince of Peace. Feel defeated this morning. I'm Hashem Nesi. I'm victory. What is it you need from him this morning? What is it you want to say about him this morning? Who is he to you? Keep pressing. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what happens when you press in and praise him. You come in thirsty, but you leave full. Listen, David says, as with choice meat, you satisfy my soul. What did he say when he came up there? My soul is thirsty. He called out to God. He pressed into his presence. He praised him in the wilderness. And now his soul is satisfied. To be in a state of contentment. To have so much more than you can hold it. It means to be filled in excess. Oh, I wonder if he is spirit in his presence is filling this place today. I sense that it is. I sense that it is. That we just want more of Him today. God, would you work in this place to bring the satisfaction that only you can bring, oh God. Maybe there's some folks right now that just need to press in a little more. As with the richest food, you satisfy my soul. The Hebrews' richest food is the fattest of the fat. Fat and cream. I'm feeling satisfied. What is worship if not our joyful feasting upon the banquet of God's presence? What is worship? As with choice meat, you satisfy my soul. We're going to end it here. Listen, I know. We say, how much more? He says, I can't do it. He starts getting filled up and satisfied, and guess what he does again? 
My mouth joyfully praises you. Now listen, listen closely. You know what this word praise means? We've had one that means boast and brag. We, we've had one that means to kneel, to bow in adoration. We've had a, 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 an expression of worship by raising of hands, which means God hears my praise or God, I need help or God, I surrender. You take your choice. And then he gives us the word here, Hallel. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? Hallel. Now, you're familiar with this word. Do you know what it literally means in Hebrew? Hallel means insanity. <laughs> That's what it means. It means insanity. It means to be so overtaken in praise and cheering and boasting and declaring the greatness and excellence of God that you look like a crazy person. <laughs> Let me ask you this morning. We're going we're gonna to praise team. Y'all go ahead and get y'all's place because I know something's going to happen. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to turn it over. But before we turn it over, I think one more time because David did it, we got to do it. This is going to go on. He's going to say later, he says, you know what? He, he gets tired and he goes and he lays down. And he says, now I'm meditating. I can't get you off my mind. And he gets up out of bed and starts praising him again. Insane praise. Let me ask you this morning. Is your God a victory giving God? That somebody needs to praise him for the victory in their life. Is he an ever present God in your life? Have you sensed his presence here this morning? Is he an always on time God? Does he come through each and every time? Is he all sufficient? Is he a faithful provider? Is he your healer? Is he your helper? Is he your father? Is he your mother? Is he a friend that sticks closer than a brother? Is he a faithful God, a covenant keeping God? Who is this God to you this morning? Who is he to you this morning? Now look, now look, now look, now look, now look. Listen to me, listen to me. There's healing right here. There's hope right here in his presence. There's comfort right here. There's victory right here. Look, you've been in a wilderness, huh? You've been in a wilderness. God said, cry out. You did. You've been in the wilderness. He said, press in. Press in. You're going to find everything you need. Just press in. <laughs> and then praise me. Pastor Kate, will you come up? You got, you got to handle this now. You got, you got to handle this. Praise team, y'all got to handle this. Because to me, we've been worshiping. But what are we getting ready to do? I hope so. I hope we're going to sing something. We're going to press in. And I want in that time, listen, God's presence is here. It's here. It's here. It's here. And I believe that what God wants is our response. And you've been giving it. Good job. Worship is this, our response to who he is. So who is he? I am. So what's your response this morning? You want to keep it going? Pastor K, come on up.